The purpose of this recording is to take you through the suggested solution of Super Duper Limited, which has been completed as your IAS 36 and your IAS 8 assignment. Super Duper Limited acquired an asset on the 1st of January 2006 for 2 million Rand. This asset is not used by Super Duper Limited to manufacture inventories. On acquisition date, the company estimated that the asset has an insignificant current residual value and a total useful life of 20 years. The asset is depreciated on the straight line method and accounted for in accordance with the cost model of IAS 16, property, plant and equipment. Due to the introduction of a more advanced asset into the market, this asset of Super Duper Limited was tested for impairment annually and a resultant impairment loss was recognized annually. The accountant responsible for the impairment loss calculations has not studied IAS 36, Impairment of Assets, with the necessary diligence. As a result, the carrying amount of the asset was written down to its fair value at the end of each financial year. The value in use of the asset was never calculated and the costs of disposal were never taken into account. The auditors of Super Duper Limited only discovered this error in 2012 during the audit of the financial statements for the year ended 31 December 2011. The accountant used the following fair values as determined by a sworn appraiser for the purposes of calculating ooh, for the purposes of calculating the annual impairment loss. On request of the auditors, the management of Super Duper Limited obtained the following information regarding this asset. It was, however, not possible to obtain the required information for years prior to 2009. So now we have the cost of disposal and the value in use for the years ended 31 December 2009, 31 December 2010, and 31 December 2011. On 31 December 2010, management of Super Duper Limited estimated that the total useful life of the asset has changed to 14 years. All other estimates were revised annually and no change was deemed necessary unless specifically stated otherwise. The accountant did not account for the change in the estimated total useful life. Required. Prepare the correcting journal entries that will be processed in Super Duper Limited's accounting records for the year ended 31 December 2010 to correct the error made. The correcting journal entries must include the correction of the opening balances on the 1st of January 2010. IFRS must be complied with. B. Disclose the prior period error note included in the financial statements of Super Duper Limited for the year ended 31 December 2011 in accordance with IFRS. And C. Calculate the depreciation expense and the impairment loss that will be included in the statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income of Super Duper Limited for the year ended 31 December 2011 in accordance with IFRS. Super Duper Limited. The next few slides are going to focus on requirement A and requirement B. As you saw on the previous slide, requirement A asks us to prepare the correcting journal entries that will be processed in the books of Super Duper Limited for the year ended 31 December 2010, and we must include the correction of the opening balances on the 1st of January 2010. So when we talk about correcting journal entries, we need to ask ourselves which line items have been affected by the incorrect impairment loss calculated. So if you think off the top of your head, the first thing you'll think of is impairment loss because you calculated an impairment loss and it was based on an incorrect recoverable amount and therefore the impairment loss is incorrect. The depreciation for the next financial year would also be incorrect and the accumulated depreciation would also be incorrect because we debit impairment loss and we credit the accumulated depreciation related to that, to that asset. And the accumulated depreciation takes the carrying amount of the asset down to its recoverable amount. So those would be the three line items affected. Requirement B then asks us to disclose the prior period error note in the annual financial statements of Super Duper Limited for the year ended 31 December 2011. Now when we prepare a prior period error note, we know that we need to have narrative information explaining what went wrong. If retrospective adjustment is possible, we need to state 
that the amounts have been retrospectively adjusted. If retrospective adjustment is not completely possible, we need to give the reason why. We then know that the prior period error note must also have two columns, one for the prior year and one for the opening balance of the prior year. Now that we have broken down the requireds, we can go and perform the calculations. This slide focuses on requirement A, specifically the first journal entry required, being the journal entry to correct the opening balance on the 1st of January 2010. In order to correct the opening balances on the 1st of January 2010, we need to look at what happened in 2009. In 2009, we started off the year with a recoverable amount, an incorrect recoverable amount, of 1,445,000 Rand. This was the fair value at the end of 2008. Because we do not have the fair value less cost of disposal or the value in use for 2008, we cannot go and correct that. So we take the recoverable amount as the 1,445,000 Rand. We then need to depreciate that in the 2009 financial year. And because we've had an impairment loss, of course, the depreciation changes. So we take the recoverable amount divided by the remaining useful life, which is 17 years, and we therefore get depreciation of 85,000 Rand for 2009. That means that at the end of the 2009 financial year, we can work out the carrying amount of this asset. And the carrying amount of the asset is 1,360,000 Rand. But we know that an impairment loss may need to be recognized at the end of this financial year because we have been given information. So now we need to take a look at what has the entity done and what should they have done. So what the entity has done is they have taken into account the recoverable amount as the fair value at the end of the financial year. And that fair value was given to us as 1,120,000 Rand. So if we take the carrying amount, less that fair value, we get that the entity has recognized an impairment loss of 240,000 Rand. But what should they have done? They should have recognized the recoverable amount as being the higher of the fair value less the cost of disposal and the value in use. We have now been given the cost of disposal for the 2009 financial year and we have been given the value in use for the 2009 financial year. Just by looking at the two amounts, you can immediately see that the fair value less cost of disposal will be greater than the value in use. So to work out the impairment loss that should have been recognized, we take the carrying amount of the 1,360,000 Rand and we deduct the fair value less cost of disposal. How did we get that fair value less cost of disposal? Well, it's the fair value of the 1,120,000 Rand less the cost of disposal of 25,000 Rand. And that gives us that we should have recognized an impairment loss of 265,000 Rand. Now, if you compare the should against the have, you will see that there is a difference of 25,000 Rand. We should have recognized a greater impairment loss in 2009, and the difference is the 25,000 Rand. That 25,000 Rand needs to be journalized in our financial statements. So, the journal entry that we will process is to debit the retained earnings opening balance with the 25,000 Rand and to credit the accumulated depreciation with 25,000 Rand. Now, the easiest journal entry to understand there is the credit leg, which is the accumulated depreciation. We want the carrying amount of this asset to reflect the recoverable amount being the fair value less cost of disposal of 1,095,000 Rand. Currently, it reflects a carrying amount of 1,120,000 Rand. So we need to decrease the carrying amount by that additional 25,000 Rand. We can decrease the carrying amount by increasing the accumulated depreciation on the credit side. Now we debit retained earnings opening balance, but why retained earnings? What's important to understand is that the profit or loss items for the year ended 31 December 2009 have been closed off to profit or loss by the beginning of the 2010 financial year. And this profit or loss gets closed off to retained earnings eventually. Okay, therefore we cannot go and correct the error in the expense account for the impairment loss because that is not a balance in the books on the 1st of January 2010. But that impairment loss, that profit, is sitting in the retained earnings. 
And therefore, we have to go and correct the error where the error is sitting, and that is in retained earnings. And that is why we debit retained earnings and credit accumulated depreciation. We now look at the second journal entry required in requirement A, and that is the journal entry that corrects the depreciation and the impairment loss recognized in 2010 itself. So in 2010, as you can see, I've split my calculations into a have and a should. This is generally how I approach any IAS 8 question, and then the difference is what I journalize, or I put into my note. So if I go and look at what has actually been done in terms of the 2010 impairment, I know that first I would need to calculate the depreciation for the year in order to get the carrying amount at the end of the year. So my depreciation will be based on management's recoverable amount of 1,120,000 Rand, which is incorrect as that is that just represents the fair value of the asset. And then I divide it by the remaining useful life at the beginning of the current year, which is 16 years. That thing gives me 70,000 Rand depreciation. Now that I have the depreciation and I have the carrying amount at the beginning of the year, I can work out the carrying amount at the end of the year. So if I take the 1,120,000 less the 70,000 Rand depreciation, I get a carrying amount on the 31st of December 2010 of 1,050,000 Rand. I can now go and work out the impairment knowing that management only took into account the fair value of the asset, and the fair value of the asset at the 31st of December 2010 amounted to 945,000 Rand. That means that the impairment loss would be equal to 105,000 Rand. That is what was done. Now I need to look at what should have been done. Once again, when I look at the should, I need to calculate the depreciation for the current year in order to get the carrying amount at the end of the year. So now my depreciation will be based on the recoverable amount, which is actually the fair value less costs of disposal of 1,095,000 Rand. I divide it by the remaining useful life at the beginning of the year, which is 16 years. And that thing gives me depreciation for the year of 68,438 Rand. That thing gives me a carrying amount at the end of the year of 1,026,562 Rand. But now I know that I'm in the should, so I need to do a proper impairment calculation. And I know that the recoverable amount is always the higher of the fair value less cost of disposal and the value in use. Now in this scenario, the um, impairment loss will then be the 1,026,562 Rand less 1,010,000 Rand. That thing gives me an impairment loss of 16,562 Rand. So now I need to work out the differences between the have and the should. In the have, I recognized an impairment loss of 105,000 Rand. In the should, I should only recognize an impairment loss of 16,562 Rand. That means I have recognized too much impairment loss, and the difference is the 88,438 Rand. I then do the same for depreciation. In the depreciation, I have recognized 70,000 Rand. How much should I have recognized? Only 68,438 Rand. That then gives me a difference of 1,532 Rand. With the carrying amount, the carrying amount, um, I've taken away too much depreciation and I've taken away too much impairment loss. So in order to get the difference in the carrying amount, you can go and take the impairment loss difference plus the depreciation difference to give me a carrying amount difference of 90,000 Rand. So now if I want to go and journalize this, we know that we wrote off too much depreciation and too much impairment loss in the books. Therefore, I actually need to increase the carrying amount of my asset again by the 90,000 Rand. So in order to increase the carrying amount, I need to debit accumulated depreciation, which will make the accumulated depreciation account balance smaller. I then know that I wrote off too much depreciation during the current financial year, so I can credit depreciation in order to make it smaller, because remember, depreciation is an expense, and expenses are generally debited. So if I want to make it smaller, I need to then credit it. 
And the same with the impairment loss. I recognized an impairment loss of 105,000 Rand, but I only need to recognize an impairment loss of 16,562 Rand. Therefore, the difference needs to be taken out of the impairment loss account. So I credit the impairment loss with the 88,438 Rand. Now, in this scenario, because I'm dealing with the year ended 31 December 2010, and I'm correcting the amounts for 2010, I can use the actual depreciation and impairment loss accounts because these accounts have not yet been closed off to profit or loss and retained earnings on the 31st of December 2010. We then move on to requirement B and requirement B asked us to disclose the prior period error note in SuperDuper Limited's financial statements for the year ended 31 December 2011. So on the slide you will see that I have put in the narrative information that we disclose in the note. So, this is how the narrative reads. During the year ended 31 December 2011, it was detected that an item of property, plant and equipment was incorrectly written down to fair value without taking into account the costs of disposal or the value in use. Full retrospective adjustment was not possible as the costs of disposal and value in use could not be determined for the periods prior to the year ended 31 December 2009. The relevant information was determined on the 31st of December 2009 and all years thereafter, which allowed for the correct recoverable amount to be determined in relation to this item of property, plant and equipment. The relevant information I am referring to would be the cost of disposal and the value in use. Comparative amounts have been restated and the effect of the correction on the financial statement line items are as follows. Now, all of this information that I've written down in the narrative has actually been taken from the scenario. It's exactly what you were told, and I've just put it into a nice little story. And I've stated that comparative amounts have been restated. The first column that we will look at in the prior period error note is the column for the um, correction of the opening balances on the 1st of January 2010. Now, on the 1st of January 2010, as we saw from the journal entry, we know that there was a decrease in property, plant and equipment and a decrease in retained earnings. Why? Because the impairment loss actually written off was too little. They wrote off an impairment loss of 240,000 Rand, but the impairment loss that should have been written off according to the correct recoverable amount would have been 265,000 Rand. Therefore, as a result, we decreased the carrying amount of property, plant and equipment and we increased the impairment loss that should have been recognized in 2009. Therefore, we decreased the retained earnings. Why did we decrease the retained earnings? Well, an increase in expense leads to a decrease in profit and a decrease in profit leads to a decrease in retained earnings. All of those amounts are the 25,000 Rand as calculated on the first slide of requirement A. Now remember, property, plant and equipment falls under total assets and retained earnings falls under the equity section of the statement of financial position. We need to show what the effect is on the um, total line items. So that's why we have the increase or decrease in the total assets and the increase or decrease in equity. Now, if we look at the 2010 financial year, we know that we decreased depreciation by the 1,560... 1,532 Rand, and we decreased the impairment loss with 88,438 Rand. That in total led to a decrease in other expenses of 90,000 Rand. A decrease in other expenses leads to an increase in profit for the year, also of 90,000 Rand, and an increase in profit for the year of 90,000 Rand leads to an increase in total comprehensive income, also of 90,000 Rand. Now you need to remember that the SFP items in the prior period error note need to have cumulative figures in. So in order to get that 65,000 Rand, that 65,000 Rand was not calculated anywhere. That is the negative 25 decrease plus the 90,000 Rand increase, which gives us a cumulative 65,000 Rand increase in property, plant and equipment. So if we take the decrease in property, plant and equipment for the 1st of January 2010, and we add the increase in total comprehensive income of 90,000 Rand, we get a cumulative increase in property, plant and equipment of 65,000 Rand. 
If property, plant, and equipment increases by 65,000 Rand, that means total assets would have increased by 65,000 Rand. The same thing applies to retained earnings. Retained earnings was decreased on the 1st of January 2010, but now we're seeing an increase in 90,000 Rand due to the decrease in depreciation and impairment loss. That negative 25,000 plus the 90,000 gives me a positive 65,000, which represents an increase in retained earnings, a cumulative increase in retained earnings. Retained earnings falls under equity, therefore we also have a cumulative increase in equity of 65,000 Rand. Now, as you can see, in order to save time, I have not shown increase in property, plant and equipment and decrease in property, plant and equipment as separate line items. I've shown them together and I've explicitly shown that any decrease in property, plant and equipment will be shown in a bracket. You can do this in a test as well to save time. You just need to make up your mind and maybe write a little note to us just saying decreases will be put in brackets and increases will be positive figures. All right, you need to find a method that is comfortable for you in order to present this prior period error note in the most efficient way possible. That then brings us to the end of requirement B. On the next slide, we will be looking at requirement C. Requirement C asked us to calculate the depreciation expense and the impairment loss that will be included in the statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income of Super Duper Limited for the year ended 31 December 2011. Now what's important with that required is that you were asked to calculate. You were not asked to disclose. And because you were not asked to disclose, you do not have to prepare a splocky. We just need a calculation of the depreciation and the impairment. So if we start off with the depreciation, we know that our carrying amount at the beginning of the year will be the 1 million and 10,000 Rand recoverable amount from the previous year. But then we know that at the end of the previous year, it was stated that the total useful life of the asset had been revised to 14 years. However, we know that in a year where there is a change in accounting estimate and an impairment, the change in accounting estimate will only be taken into account at the or in the next financial year. So now in order to get the remaining useful life at the beginning of the year, we take the 14 years total useful life less the five years that have passed. That then gives us nine years. So in order to calculate the depreciation for 2011, we take the recoverable amount of 1,010,000 Rand and we divide it by the remaining useful life of nine years. And that then gives us depreciation amounting to 112,222 Rand. Now that we've calculated the depreciation, we can work out the carrying amount at the end of the financial year, which we need in order to calculate the impairment loss to be recognized on the 31st of December 2011. So the carrying amount at the end of the year is, the, is 897,778 Rand. How is that calculated? Well, it's the carrying amount at the beginning of the year of the 1,010,000 Rand less the depreciation for the year of 112,222 Rand. That gives us the carrying amount of 897,778 Rand. Then we know that the, requ the recoverable amount is the higher of the value in use and the fair value less cost of disposal. So we are told on the 31st of December 2011 that the fair value of this asset amounts to 790,000 Rand and that the cost of disposal are 37,000 Rand. That then gives us the fair value less cost of disposal of 753,000 Rand or the value in use. And the value in use was given to us as 750,000 Rand. Of those two, the fair value less cost of disposal of 753,000 are higher and therefore the fair value less cost of disposal represents our recoverable amount for the 2011 financial year. In order to calculate the impairment loss, we take the carrying amount at the end of the year of 897,778 Rand and we deduct the recoverable amount, which represents the fair value less cost of disposal, of 753,000 Rand. That then gives us an impairment loss of 144,778 Rand. That then brings us to the end of Super Duper Limited. I really hope that this video has helped your understanding of the solution and of the information provided to us.